my name is Christine and welcome to Christine's Culinary Quest. Shout out to my friend Lindley who came up with the awesome name. I'm going to run with it for now, but if anyone has any other suggestions they want me to consider for the future, comment on those down below along with any recipes you want me to cover, challenges you want me to try to uh, beat, not eat, um, and anything else you want to comment, I'll do my best to read them all. Um, a little bit about me, I am an editor, which means that last year during COVID, I worked at home. I ate too much. I didn't exercise a ton because I was at home and what? I gained a lot of weight, like a lot of people did. And going into 2021, I've been trying to focus on eating healthy, exercising more, just being healthier, improving myself, um, studying other cultures, studying other languages, just trying to be better, learn more, be open-minded, and just in general, be a better me, I guess. And so because of that, I've been getting really into Japanese cuisine. Uh, so today I want to do for this first video, teaching you how to make traditional Japanese breakfast. So traditional Japanese breakfast have a few components that are common throughout Japanese food, uh, fish, rice, uh, pickled vegetables, potentially. Uh, they have a couple different options that we'll walk through later. Um, but all of this takes a little bit of time to bring together. Ideally, you're going to want to prep the night before, which is what we're going to start now. Prep whatever fish you're going to use. I'm gonna use salmon, uh, and then we'll also prep our rice and our seaweed that we'll use to make the base for our miso soup. So let's go ahead, we'll get our fish, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need is your fish. I'll be using this a very large piece of salmon because I will be using it a lot. So I will be cutting this salmon into one inch wide strips and I will freeze the extra that I prepare for different meals throughout the week, including more traditional Japanese breakfast, um, other Asian foods, and it also goes well with just traditional sides, broccoli, salad, uh, things like that, um, because salmon is really versatile. I know this is pretty intimidating. You don't have to buy this super big one. I'm gonna eat it a lot. So it does come in a bunch of different sizes and you can prep them all the same, uh, just following the steps that we're going to start right now. So we're going to start by cutting our salmon into different strips and making our marinade. Now that we finished cutting our salmon, we're going to switch over and start working on the marinade. Uh, the things that you'll want to pull out for this marinade are salt, light brown sugar, and water. Um, I do recommend light brown sugar instead of regular brown sugar or white sugar, uh, just because it helps to give you some of that darkness that brown sugar has um, without it being as overwhelming um, for the side dishes that you're going to have it go with and still helping it to uh, be subtle enough that you can pair it with the rice and the soup and them not be clashing against each other. Part of having a traditional Japanese breakfast is going between all the different sides in the main course. You don't eat all of one thing and then move on to the next thing. You really switch back and forth between all of the different options um, and they should all complement each other. So be sure not to use brown sugar you can use either light brown sugar or white sugar. I highly recommend the light brown sugar, um, but you can use either one. So let's go ahead and start on the menu. So you're going to take one tablespoon of light brown sugar, add that in. Then two tablespoons of salt and one cup of water. Now we're going to whisk this all together and just agitate that until all of the solids start to dissolve. You're going to want to keep going until it's clear and everything has fully dissolved in the water. Once the sugar and the salt has dissolved in your water, go ahead and take your salmon and put it into your marinade face down. The sugar is going to help coat the salmon and uh, help keep it really tender whenever we cook it. 
and it's going to also uh, allow it to absorb that salt and really have a good uh, flavoring and depth profile that'll really help it taste good. Next, we'll prep some kombu dashi. Fill a container with water and add kombu seaweed. Do not remove the white on the seaweed. That's the umami that will give flavor to your dashi. You'll need to let this sit for 30 minutes before we start prepping our radishes. Uh, so the next thing we're going to prep is the rice. Gently agitate the rice to remove the starch. The first time you drain the water, it will look white, but continue to rinse and drain the rice until the water only looks slightly cloudy and leave the water in. This usually takes three rinses. Do not drain the rice at this point. The rice ideally would soak in water for one hour before cooking, but since my mornings are busy and it doesn't affect the rice, I prepare mine the night before. There's one more thing we need to prep, radishes. First, pull out two pots. We're going to prep some dashi radishes. Pull your container of kombu and water out of the fridge and add it to the first pot and slowly begin to boil it. Then, while it's boiling, let's slice some radishes. We'll be using these to make a side of dashi steeped radishes. While we wait, let's also make another container of kombu and water. Once this container sits overnight, we'll have cold brew kombu to use as the base of our miso soup in the morning. We'll also need to prep a bowl of ice for after we use our second pot to boil the radishes and a container to put our radishes in while they steep overnight. Fill the second pot with two inches of water and bring it to a boil. At this point, quickly remove your kombu from your left pot before the pot reaches a boil. At that point, the kombu will get slimy and bitter, so be sure to take it out before then. Then, turn off the stove for that pot and check your other pot. Wait a moment for your second pot to reach a boil. Once that pot is boiling, add your radish slices for approximately 30 seconds, or until the color begins to come out of the vegetables. We want to shock the vegetables until they begin to break down just a little. When that happens, remove your radish slices from the pot and put it in your ice bath to blanch the radishes for a few minutes and check your first pot. What you have in the pot now is kombu dashi, the vegan version of the base we'll make tomorrow for our miso soup and what we'll be using to steep our radishes. Our dashi needs to cool before we use it to steep. So if your pot is still warm, add it to a heat resistant container, which you can then hold in the ice bath until it has cooled down. Once it is cool, remove the container and dry the sides. Remove all but one cup of the dashi, freezing the rest to use another day, or put it in the freezer to add to your miso soup tomorrow. Finally, add one one half tablespoon of soy sauce. A lighter soy sauce is more ideal because it'll be less salty, which will help your side not to overpower the other dishes in your meal. Finally, add our blanched radishes to our soy dashi mixture and place in the fridge to steep overnight for a minimum of six hours. See you in the morning. Now that we've had our rice, our salmon, our seaweed, our radishes, all of that sit overnight, all we need to prep this morning is the vegetables. First, let's chop a half cup of both green onion and Napa cabbage. We'll also need to tear chunks of lettuce and nori seaweed for our salad. So go ahead and tear that up into small pieces as well. Be sure to make them fairly small pieces so you don't get an overly salty bite later on. I'll be using one tablespoon of diced garlic in my salad, but if you prefer fresh garlic, have one clove prepped for this recipe. We're ready to begin cooking our traditional Japanese breakfast, which includes our grilled salmon, a seaweed lettuce salad with soy sesame dressing, miso soup, sticky rice, and radish slices steeped in dashi broth, and a pickled side of pickled fruit that I bought at the Asian market when buying ingredients. Pickling your own fruits and vegetables the Japanese way can be really hard. It can take years to master, and if, like me, you're not super confident in your ability to pull it off, go ahead and buy those things locally at your local Asian Mart, Walmart, or if you can't find it anywhere else, go ahead and buy it through Amazon. You'll be surprised how many places you can find them when you start looking. Now that we have everything prepped, let's get started. 
First, we'll take our prepped rice and the water it sat in overnight and add it into a rice cooker, pot, or other device to heat up the water. Once we have the rice set, let's start our dashi broth. For this, we'll pull out our kombu seaweed, which we soaked overnight. Pour the mixture into a pot and slowly bring it to a boil on the stove. Be sure to remember to keep an eye on that pot and remove the kombu right before the broth starts boiling. You can reuse that boiled kombu for rice seasoning or in other dishes later on in the week. After removing the kombu, add bonito flakes or katsuobushi and let it boil in the water for 30 to 60 seconds. After that, take your water and strain out all of the solids. The solids can be reused in rice seasoning and in other dishes as well. Once you're done, put the liquid back into the pot and bring it back to a boil. It's now been 10 minutes since we started cooking the rice. At this point, you need to turn your stove heat to low and let the rice sit in the pot for an additional 15 minutes. Do not open the pie at any point in the process so it can steam properly. When the dashi in the pot begins to boil, add your napa cabbage. You can customize your miso soup with other ingredients as well, with more dense vegetables being added before the pot begins to boil and vegetables that cook quicker being added after it begins to boil. After the broth has boiled our vegetables for four to five minutes, reduce the heat to a simmer and wait for the liquid to cool off. In the meantime, grab your torn chunks of lettuce for the salad. Add one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil one teaspoon of garlic, cover and microwave for three minutes. Then we'll add in one and one half tablespoon of sesame seeds, one tablespoon of soy sauce and the seaweed, tossing one more time. Now that your broth has cooled down, chop your tofu in the palm of your hand and add it to your miso soup. Stir briefly and take it off the burner so that you can start cooking the salmon. Lastly, we'll begin to grill our salmon. Heat a pan on the stove and lightly coat it with oil to keep the salmon from sticking. Place your salmon in the pan and check your rice, which should now be ready. Gently scoop your rice using something like a paddle or a flat spoon, gently turning the rice over and mixing bottom to top. Try not to mush the rice as it is now sticky and delicate. While we do this, let's keep an eye on our salmon. Turn it over as each side finishes browning and move it to a plate when it's done. Finally, we pull out our pickled fruit or veggies, which we bought or prepped ahead of time, and we set out our meal. Like this, you see the traditional layout of a Japanese breakfast. A dish of grilled fish, rice, soup, a boiled or steeped side, a side with sauce, and pickled fruits or vegetables. In my opinion, the best part about this meal is that the entire meal is under 600 calories. I can't even eat half of this meal. I'm gonna take it to work for lunch, have it for breakfast, a lot going forward the rest of this month. So uh, I hope y'all got a lot out of it. Hey guys, if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe so that you'll be able to see when new content comes out and let me know your thoughts on other recipes I can cover. Uh, I'm thinking about a couple things right now. Uh, I'll have the two times spicy Korean noodle challenge coming up and I'm thinking about a couple healthy twist recipes, uh, but let me know what y'all are interested in and I'll take that into consideration.